brother's blocking his shots. And he's like, I'm terrible at this. I'm never going to be any good. I'm like, <laughs> your brother's twice your size. Right. Like, how upset can you get about this, man? <laughs> and he, every time, he's like, I suck. I'm terrible. Like, can you calm down, please? <laughs> It's just so over the, the time. kids with the with the sport with the sports and shit now. So my daughter's like, uh, "Dad, is Mr. Randy here yet?" <laughs> said, no, why? Because I want to roller skate. <laughs> that's what she she roller skates around the house. That's oh, okay. her that's All her right. move. All right. Yeah. yeah. So like, can you do the dishes for me? Yeah, she's doing the dishes with the roller skates on. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> see, now that sounds like a problem waiting to happen. No, dude, yo, she dropped a slice of apple pie a couple minutes ago. No. You want to talk about like upset? <clears throat> I was upset because she's just like, oh no, I'm gonna have to get another slice of pie. Yeah, no, no, is that no, how you think no, this that's works? That's not how that works at all. <laughs> Yo, you can maybe dust that one off. <laughs> just get you know. random. Just keep getting <laughs> slices of pie. Oh, that's not how it works. Crazy. Five second rule. Yo. That's how that works. <laughs> Yo, get the scoop That's in. how that works. <laughs> Ain't nothing on that floor with roller skates off. anyway. You know exactly, I mean? yeah. right? Just dust it off a little bit. You'll be fine. Oh, man. Out of control. Yo, thank you for joining me, Of man. course, man. I appreciate been, it, bro. Man, I've been looking forward to this for a Yo, I, I'm so, I'm so disheartened at the last conversation that we had. Yeah, we had a ball, too. Huh? We so. had a ball, and like a rookie... <laughs> <laughs> like a rookie, I never hit the fucking record button, bro. Hey, you, you know what? Oh, it's man. not the first time that's ever happened. We did a uh, mm. on Black Tribbles one uh, one time. So every every couple of years, every mm. I guess once a season, we'll do a hip hop show. Okay. And we did a great one one year, man. It was oh, amazing. God. It was so much fun. And this was back when we were on G Town Radio, so we okay. could curse, and it was just you know it was it was off the chain. Wow. And for whatever reason, it didn't record. <laughs> Oh, so for whatever another, reason. Yeah, I don't even know why. We did another one, and it was cool, but that one was just, oh, man. It was it's perfect. not the same. It was perfect. It's not the same. Yeah, we had a good time at the, at the coffee shop. It probably would have been crazy. The audio probably would have been a mess anyway. Yeah, it, I mean, but it was it still. Is, it, it was a good time. It was, it was a good different. time. Yeah, absolutely. So, Black Tribbles, where where is your podcast at? Uh, Black Tribbles now is at Philly Cam. Okay. Um, We've been doing it. We've been at Philly Cam for about three years mm-hmm. now. We started in 2011 okay april of 2011 um my man len um the bat triple mm-hmm. he had been doing a he was doing a hip-hop show on on g-town radio okay called the wreck and he uh he asked he you know just put it out there for cats to come through you know uh you know send off a joint so i sent him my song war of the words mm-hmm. and war of the words is an intergalactic mc battle right, right. so you know, I played, you know, we played it on the show and they were like, what the hell? So we wound up talking about like comics and sci-fi and cartoons, like the whole show. Mm-hmm. And so he had this idea for now. He was like, yo, there's just not a lot of this out here for right, us. Right. You know what I mean? So he hit me up a couple weeks later. It was like, yo, I have this idea. I want to, you know, I want to start doing this thing um, where we talk just geek stuff. Okay. Uh, from a black perspective like are you down I was like sure you know but I was living in Delaware at the time so we put together a whole squad my man E. Mac and Kennedy um, and then uh, Jason Richardson came through for uh, mm-hmm. he came through after a couple of weeks and I was calling in every week because oh, okay. I was still living down in Delaware and I was working Thursday nights uh, when the show was on mm-hmm. and so you know we started it was funny the funny part is we started that April April 2011 was the first month uh, the Black Triple started, and the first month I went on tour with Gangster Ass. Oh, okay. Yeah, so April 2011 was like life changing for me. Wow. But it was, you know, it's and a, it's a lot to take on in one year. It is. Right. It, it it was, but it was like it was enough that it was it was slow at the time. It was a nice mm-hmm. slow build, and then you know it's just it's just kind of progressed. Okay. Uh, quite nicely, actually. That's what's up. Yeah. So who 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 the hell is Arson, the voice of reason? Uh, anyway. How long have you been rhyming? I, dude, I started rhyming. I, I tell the story all the time. I wrote my first verse on the back of the bus in first grade. Oh, okay. All Me right. and my man, Quincy. Um, he was Master Q. <laughs> and I was Disco G. This was 79. Yeah, y'all was so, this yeah. a while ago. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Disco G. I'm still, put, still considering putting out, putting right. out a new Disco G project. Right. Not quite certain. But, you know, I was six years old, man. So, you okay. know. Um, but I was... It was really just a 
off and on kind of thing that I would do. And then I met a boy, uh, a guy in high school, uh, my man Craig. Uh, it's white kid that used to rap. Okay. He used to go by Gray Boy, which used okay. to make me laugh. Uh, so I would rap with him a little bit. And then, uh, but I was always just kind of doing it a little bit, a little bit here and there. And then when I went to Penn State, um, I met a whole bunch of cats up there, a bunch of different MCs and whatnot. Mm. And I started hanging out with uh, with Lewis Logic. Okay. And he was like, yo, Rand, you know what? You, you, you're you pretty good at this. Like, you should want, you know, let's do this. Let's yeah. do something. So I really, really started getting in and up there, um, me and him. Uh, my man Shanti, um, my man Jay Love, we had a whole squad up there. Okay. Um, and then me and uh, my my man Nate, uh, Nate Abney, we had a group called the Flight Brothers. Okay. Uh, JJ Brown produced all of our stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, he did all of J uh, Lewis's early stuff and okay. whatnot. <laughs> um, and Five G Studios was born in <laughs> in in JJ's uh, you know his apartment Five G. So he, uh -huh. you know we started everything up there. And you know, it just really, really started from there. And I was, you know, I put out the put out an EP that I burned up all the copies. And, <laughs> yeah, and my man did the artwork for it. I was selling it. I was working at uh, Mike's Video. So, what year was that? This was ninety ninety seven, ninety eight, okay. something like that. Right. Um, so, you know, we put the uh, I put that out, and you know, I was selling copies out of my out of the car mm. selling them out I was, but I was working at Mike's Videos working mm. at his video store and CD store and I was selling them out of there wow. people were buying them it was pretty cool um, that was the age for that too yeah right yeah, trunk um, sales oh trunk sales yeah. the best <laughs> yeah that was the time I for that. carried them in my backpack all the time <laughs> like yep. as a matter yep. of fact I just put the poster up um I had a buddy of mine that that drew up a, a John and said you know, like on sale on here on some anniversary oh, wow. reason uh, it was called Words of Art, and you know, I, but I found it the other day, so it's hanging up in my house now. Okay. Um, and then, you know, so I was doing that, and we were we were ready to make a couple of moves. Um, cats graduated, and you know, we're moving on. And mm -hmm. I came back to Philly, and my soon-to-be wife at the time she was like, "Yo, you need to get a job." <laughs> I was like, "They're good for that." All right, so I started working. <laughs> yeah. I started working, and you know, I stopped doing music. My daughter was born. It was just kind of, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of doing. Now, life. when you say you stopped doing music, you mean you stopped doing music? Like I was, I wasn't actively pursuing music, okay. but I was still writing. And, okay, you know, um, it was right around that time. Though uh, me and Nate, uh, we put out the Flight Brothers album. Mm -hmm. um, we actually did. We had it. We had a. We had an album release party at the Grape Street Pub okay. that like nine people came to, but it was <laughs> cool, man. It was really, really dope. My man uh -huh. Rob put the whole thing together. It was very cool. Um, and then my daughter was born. And I was just working, you know, just working yeah. and working. And, um, moved down to Delaware uh, where I was uh, in grad school. And I started working at this bar. Hmm. Uh, this place, this spot called the Deer Park Tavern, which was just a most ridiculous place in the <laughs> world, man. These cats, you know, these young boys in in Delaware. Delaware is a weird, yeah. weird spot, man. Like that whole yeah. that whole yeah. Wilmington, Newark area. Mm -hmm. Like everybody there was trying to be way tougher than they needed to be. Yeah, it it's, like, it's one of those places that that are, that don't really have much of its own identity. Yeah, so yeah. They're just just real, real hard for no good. And then you had the college students there too, so it was just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. But there was a band that used to play on Sunday nights, and uh, I got cool with the whole band. And they were like, yo, you want to get up and, you know, spit a verse or whatever? Right. So I would do that on a weekly basis. Okay. Like, All right, cool. And, like, and then I, that's when I started writing, again, like really writing again. Hmm. Like, so I would get home and the kids would be asleep. My wife would be asleep. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to write. Hmm. And, um, and was doing that for for a while. And then, my, and then Dolio reached out to me about Gangster Grass and I was like okay so was Dolio in the band already? Do Alright so Dolio me and him I had met him in 99 up okay. at Penn State we met in the Cypher okay we was just he, we was just chilling outside of a bar right night a whole bunch of cats was rapping so we was out there just rapping I was like yo this boy kind of nice yeah Dolio is nice yeah Man. right so we <laughs> just you know we just got cool and then you know he left and I left and we were both all over the place mm -hmm. and while he was in New York he linked up with Wrench uh, the creator of Gangsta Grass. Okay. And they were in a band together for a little bit called Battlestar America. Okay. And then they stopped doing that. He came back to Philly 
So when Wrench wanted to take get, start a Gangster Grass and wanted to go on tour with it, he called Dolio, and Dolio couldn't go because he was working the day job, like, for real, for real. Okay. And I was working, I was running a comic book store up in Plymouth Meeting. Mm-hmm. So Dolio called me. I was on my way to work. It was a Tuesday morning. I'm on my way to work. He was like, yo, my man wants to do this thing. He's got this, this bluegrass hip-hop band. Like, he needs an MC. And I was like, all right, well, all right, let me check it out. And I listened to some of the stuff on the way to work. <laughs> By the time I got to work, I was I told my boss, I was like, yo, um, my man wants me to do this thing this weekend. Can we work it out? He was mm-hmm. like, yeah, sure, whatever. And it was that. It was like that. Can't beat that. So that Wednesday night, I went to the, and remember, you remember the M room? Yeah. Right there, Front and Gerard? Yep. When Front and Gerard was still Front and Front Gerard. Front and Gerard, yep. <laughs> bro, <laughs> yep. It was crazy now. And this was not even 10 years ago. Nah. It was nuts now. Yeah. So we went down there. I did a show with them. Pre-gentrification. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. We got on. Uh, like I got on, just kicked a couple of old verses, kicked a couple of freestyles with them, mm-hmm. and then left, got in the van with these four dudes I had never met before <laughs> in my life, drove down to North Carolina. Right. We did three shows in North Carolina that weekend. It was actually the first time I had ever been to Asheville, North Carolina. My okay. mom is from there. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So it was you know just a little bit of history there. Yeah. And, and after that, I was like, when I got back, I was like, yeah, I need to do this. Uh, like, this is this is my thing because I forgot, I forgot how good it felt to yeah, be on the stage. You found and yourself and again. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. right. I'm 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 pretty good at this. So, <laughs> all right. no doubt. No. And now, nine almost nine years later, hey. you know, and y'all tour y'all tour pretty steady. Yeah, yeah, we do a, we do a, we do a good amount. We're actually going to be in uh, Nashville next week, okay. and. Uh, just doing a, it's just a bunch of stuff coming up, man. And the really cool part about it is, um, we've gone through a, a few different lineup changes and so on and so forth, mm-hmm. and had some had some very some great great musicians involved with us, um, and have got a chance to work with. Like, I always tell this story. We got I got a, I was we were doing a photo shoot a few years back, mm-hmm. and we got done. We were sitting down eating dinner, and my daughter called me, and I'm sitting across. Uh, f- uh, from M1, mm-hmm. from Dead Prez, <laughs> and we're sitting there. Yeah, we have been sitting there chatting, and me and my daughter, like my daughter, called me, and we're I'm sitting there, like she was need to help with her homework, mm-hmm. so I'm doing like writing down the, the math and stuff, and me and M1 are helping my my daughter with her math homework. <laughs> and I'm like, what <laughs> oh, is wow. this, man? Like, wow. what is my life? It was, but it was like the greatest thing in the world just to be able to have these experiences when absolutely we, we recorded some stuff with uh with smith and wesson okay and you know i brought uh my kids and my my youngest was about a one at the time mm-hmm. and his mom so we're up in the studio just hanging out and you know tech and steel are like you, you we're just amazed at how cute my son was <laughs> and i was like this is the greatest thing in the that's world that's wow yeah because for me you know like encountering these cats these these dudes for me are these are guys like, we grew up with yeah, yeah and like legendary status yeah. in my head so i'm feeling like i'm a bit of a goofball yeah like, <laughs> but at the same time yeah just regular dudes yep. and you know everybody was mad cool and i, I haven't encountered anybody mm-hmm. really have not encountered a soul in in hip-hop that was like a terrible person mm-hmm. which makes me feel really good yeah you know I mean? yeah it, it, especially when you consider the, the personas that people portray yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i mean uh, so, n- when you when you meet guys like that and you're working with gangster grass, is there any sort of like uh, weird? There's no weirdness when you no, meet. No, that's the funny part about it because when they first when uh, the first gangster grass album, uh, Cool Keith was on it, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and that was just you know something that Wrench put together. Um, and then we met Smith and Weston down in South by Southwest mm-hmm. uh, in 2012. And you know they just came up and did a song, right. like it, and like the next day they took us to their uh, their their uh, they did a show with with Quali and Gene Gray and Farrell Monch, and it was just oh, wow. it was just like just like no just, yeah just just it was uh, very I it, it took me a lot to just mm-hmm. kind of stay cool, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because you know when I met. Farrell Monk for the first time I was like oh my god <laughs> Farrell Monk like, nah. like trying not to really skits out but he was real cool you know what I mean and uh, Gene Gray was awesome like all these people right. were just very very cool and it was it was very cool for me to sort of 
while not like removing their legendary status from them mm-hmm. just to be able to sort of exist in that space with amongst them, like, them. Yeah, yeah this is cool yeah. it was it was a lot cooler than i thought it, it could. was was gangster grass ever just a bluegrass band or no. has there always been no, an mc it's always been an mc element so okay. wrench uh wrench is his dad is from oklahoma but he grew up in california okay right so he's and he's about 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 our age so he was coming up around the same time with a lot of hip-hop and whatnot and so his dad's influences and a lot of what he was seeing, you know, in school and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that just kind of mixed with him. Okay. And he, this guy is able to just create, like his, you know, he's got, he makes these really great beats and he's able to create these great melodies on the guitar mm-hmm. and just, it, you know, he's a multitasker on a level that mm-hmm. I very rarely have seen. Plus the boy can write, man. Wrench got really? some bars. Okay. Like, and so for him, it wasn't that hard. Okay. You know, it didn't make a, it wasn't that difficult. The, he, you know, he was he was making beats and producing some stuff, and he mm-hmm. was you know telling cats like, yo, you know what would sound dope on here, like a like a like a steel guitar sample. <laughs> they were like, eh, maybe, right. maybe maybe not. So he was like, all right, I'll just do it myself. Right. And you know, and he did that, and has been able to really convince people fairly simply how how much it works. Right. It, no, it really works. It really works. We're, <laughs> it, we're having a good time. Today. I had a I had a chance to see it up close, uh, shooting the videos a couple yeah, weeks man. ago. That was a good time uh, for the boring. for the mixtape. My brother, where you at? Yeah. Um, that was. I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, and I like I was a like, I'm a I was already a fan. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But like to see it up close. It was it was incredible watching y'all go through all of that. It was that wild. was you know the, the funny part about that was that was an idea that I just had. Like mm-hmm. I was, I forget what I was doing, but I was listening to something. It was you know it was a uh, it was Wrath of the King. Okay, and with that guitar sample, yeah, and I was like, yo, that would sound kind of dope on a banjo. Yeah, so I just you know I would just I just played it for Dan one day, our banjo player, and he was like, oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. And so he would just play it on a random, and then one day it would like at a show. He just surprised me with it. Oh, what? Because I would I would do a freestyle on every show, um, and he just surprised me with it. I was like, hmm. "All right, cool." <laughs> so we well, we had the idea to put together you know a list of songs hmm. that had uh, samples that you could play actual instrumentation. You could get, yeah. yeah, but were easily recognizable. So as hmm. soon as you heard the sample, you were like, "Oh, okay," mm-hmm. and it that's how it evolved we started with like we had a list of like 15 songs okay and then we chopped it down to seven and you know but we're going to do a series of them so you, there is plans to do more of that yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah, Ab- volume that, two yeah it's, it's absolutely necessary yeah yeah because it was it was fun it was a lot of fun to do and and the 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 re, here's the the really cool part was um our our publicist Fiona who is a monster she's amazing and she's been in the game for a minute so she knows uh she knows Jay Rule and she knows Farrell Monch and she knows all the guys she was in the studio with okay. Farrell and played him a couple of the joints and he was like yo that's kind of hot yeah and so you know that is you know that for me is like, I did, that's dope. the verification you know yeah. and, and slim kid trey from the far side was like mm-hmm. yo this is really dope man yeah. and was you know enjoying exactly what we were doing and so I, that i think the dopest part is the part probably nobody is aware of is that it was all done in one session yeah like yeah, that was one one, session, one evening yeah. one night in the studio yeah it, my back was killing me after I that, bet, bro. Man, you was all over the oh place. Oh my god, <laughs> you was all <laughs> yo, over the place. Yo. And the great part about oh, it was, man. if anybody see, yeah, you know, when you see the videos, the video is flawless, man. It's very, very oh, fluid. Dude, it, and that's 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 was, from months and months of practice with that gimbal. Yeah, man. y'all got me at the right time <laughs> six months ago. Y'all have been like, yo, L, what are you doing with that thing, man? <laughs> like, oh, my, my bad, my bad. Give me a minute. But it it came out it came out so well. Yeah. Uh, the artwork. Yeah. Does Wrench do the artwork too? No, that artwork was my man, uh, man Kenny Thomas. Okay. Who uh, I met him through Black Tribbles. We had interviewed him a couple years back, and he's a t-shirt guy. Okay. So you know I'm a t-shirt junkie. Yeah. And so I got like four or five Jones that he's done. It's just uh-huh. like he's got one with like a a dude with like a microphone head. 
wearing a Kango, holding, right. the, holding the holding the boombox. He's just got a bunch of very <laughs> cool joints. So I buy his T-shirts like all the time. Uh, I need and to I'm, know where those are. I uh, need, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, find yeah, yeah, He's on T Republic. It's yeah. ridiculous. Okay. And so I just threw threw some ideas out there to a bunch of different artists mm -hmm. I know. Um, and he got back to me first. Um, and then uh, my man Miguel Blanco, he sent me uh, another one that we're going to use for volume two. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was just an idea of, all right, I got a bunch of my people that do a bunch of different things. I know artists, I know mm -hmm. DJs, I know whatever. Let's see how many of these people I can get involved. Okay. And as we're putting this out there, get them out there too. Because Kenny, you know, Kenny stuff is, uh, it's really, really all dope. Right. And he, he's doing his thing on a, on a, on a, on a pretty big basis now. Okay. So it's just cool to be able to reach out to guys that you yeah. know and be like, yo, what do you got for me? And he laid it, laid it out real and quick. That means crazy. Because I, I, I was just kind of going back and forth with Wrench. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as like the edits and what needed to be adjusted and and the, how to bring it in, he was like, "Let me get you the artwork." And knowing how much stuff he does, yeah. I assumed he did. I just assumed he did the artwork yeah, too. Yeah, well, Wrench, is, <laughs> Wrench also has like he's got you know contacts with Dave, so all mm -hmm. the other all work for the for the other Gangsta Grass stuff that we've put out. That's all people he knows. Right. People we know um, the, all the shots from the uh, the live album. Mm -hmm. Uh, pocket full of fire that's all our friend melody out in indianapolis and okay. she shot all that stuff and we did a photo shoot that day uh no that one's the live stuff was from a, another show and then we did another photo shoot with her with so a lot of the shots that you're seeing now mm -hmm. that's all her work okay and she actually did uh she did two videos for me of just you know clips of uh, photos that she had shot, she put together for one of my joints, mm -hmm. and then she did a just a driving video uh, and just changed up the artwork a little bit, the 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 the, the, the images a little bit okay. for an, a, you know, another video for me. I was like, yeah, why not put it out there? Sure, <laughs> I, go crazy. Word. Word. You know, I wish I had time to make videos. <laughs> it's not oh hard. God. It's not time to make videos. It's not, but you know, with a six-year-old, it's it's you know it's. Dude, I did my first couple videos. Put them in there. Yeah, right. That, yeah, that's the plan for the next one. I, <laughs> yeah, I got a couple of ideas for a couple of joints for the for the album for my per, for my solo album mm -hmm. that I that I want to do and involve the kids. With. What's up with the What's up with the Arson album? The featuring Lawrence. The album is done, is man. It? I'm working on it. The, there's just a couple of things I need to wrap up on some some sound issues. Okay. Um, but you know, Baby Black is is uh, mastering the album, and you know mm -hmm. it sounds great. Right. It sounds really, really. Now is great. that all chops? That's uh, no, it's chops. Did like three joints on there. Okay. Um, Wrench did two. Mm -hmm. My man, uh, my man Jay Will did a couple, and the guy that I recorded it all with, my man DJ Why Not. Okay. Uh, cat that's in Philly he lives like right up the block from me. Um, <laughs> I met him. He was dating my ex wife. Okay. And she was like, yo, you have to meet this guy. You're going to love this dude. And, you know, we hit it off. We're like, yo, this dude's amazing. He's, a, you know, DJ and, you know, hip hop cap been in the game for a while. Right. And so I was like, yeah. And so I recorded the whole album in his spot. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it took forever just because, you know, kids and, uh, you know, me and uh, Alex's mom it's had broken up and then she was sick for a little bit and my dad is sick right now mm. he's in a nursing home so okay. i've been you know dealing with just a thousand different things Absolutely. it's all been done like a grown-up and you know but yeah. it's it's done and um just the last couple of things need to get put together the artwork's all done mm. and um there's a my man ken a uh, guy I went to penn state with he took the the shot for the cover mm. and then there was a guy named sean was a big gangster grass fan he was doing some of the artwork and he passed away oh wow. you know i mean he was just manipulating the images and so the last one that he sent me it wasn't perfect okay but i was like you know what i'm gonna go with this one yeah Man, well he's, yeah he's good at, dude. at the very least um and then my daughter did a picture of me that's going on the inside of the covers. My daughter's an amazing artist. I've seen, I've seen her stuff. She's really good. Yeah, she is. I'm really, really impressed with her. And, um, and so, like, the whole thing is just like, all right, well, I know some people. Y'all want to help me make put a record out? Right. So, you know, that's that's how it worked out. Um, right. But it's done, and there's a there's, a, there's one track with features on it. Uh, okay. My friend Chatora Lane, from uh, she's from Winchester, Virginia. 
she's actually my tattoo artist's niece and i didn't know she was nice like this okay and she's she's a monster Who, rhyming yeah 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 her and this other guy my <laughs> man <laughs> Let's I mean, go, man. Yeah, man. It, yo, Let's go. It's, yeah, it's dope. It's in it's, good hands. If it's it at, in, if yeah. it's with Baby Black over at J Black, it's in good hands. It is in very That's good hands. That's my guy. We were over there last yeah. night, man. That's we just recorded up. three new joints for Gangsta Grass. Oh, man. Um, some new stuff that we're putting out later on this year. We got a, uh, we're working on a new project, um, and we're not sure if it's going to be full-length album or EP. Mm. We're not sure yet, but it's... Uh, Where the rest of the guys based at? Uh, so Dolio's here in Philly. Okay. Uh, Dan is in Jersey, Wrench is in Brooklyn, and Farrow is down in Baltimore. Okay. Uh, so we just... Where's uh, Lisey T from? Lisey T's up in... She's in New York, too. Okay. Yeah, she's right. in New York. Her and her husband, Max, they got a group together. They actually just put out a joint. I forget the name of the single, hmm. but it's bananas. I gotta, really? I got to send you a link for it. It's, yeah. a, it's a banger, dude. Absolutely. It's a real, real banger. She's so nice on the cuts. And Max, yo, Max got bars, man. They're... they're yeah. They're like the the best hip hop couple ever. It's so great. <laughs> that's a that's a unique uh, uh, arrangement. It really is. Yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that hasn't happened already. Like on a major scale. The only one I know of is uh, uh, Lyft and Eternia. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, but that's about it. That's all I could think of. I mean, I guess maybe Remy Ma and Papoose count. I don't know. Oh, do they? I don't know. I mean, I guess why not? Uh, where's 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 uh where's where's Beats and Alicia Keys album at? Yeah, right. Like you would think that would have happened by now. What are we doing? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, something. <laughs> like, they, they, do they spend time just in separate wings like, at a house doing like, separate y'all know, stuff? Like, y'all know y'all both make music. Do y'all know what y'all do for yeah, a living? Like, you know, she sings, right? Yeah, like, y'all, y'all can do this together. I don't. I don't yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's best they don't. Maybe that's how you stay together. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, probably. It might. It might have something to do with it. Yeah, it yeah. might have something to do with it. You mentioned your dad. Your dad's a retired cop, right? My dad is, uh, he did 30 years in uh, Philly. Uh, my dad and three of my uncles were all in the force. Uh, yeah, you come from like a whole. Yeah, I, yeah, I come from, you know, a, a, a legacy. And See, now I'm a first generation cop. Okay. Right? Um. So I don't, I don't know what that's like. Like, I, I, I don't, can you tell me what my kids are going through I, growing up well, <laughs> under that? me? Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I never got in any trouble hmm. in the city, and not because like you know I, they was looking out for me or nothing. Right. I just knew better. I was like, "Yo, if anything pops off, yeah. one of these four guys is gonna find out real quick, yeah. and I don't need that." Yeah. Don't. And need you suffered genuine consequences yeah, back exactly. then, not just don't no. you ever do that. Not none of that. Nope. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Let me just let me just <laughs> stay in the house. Let me just hang out with my squad. I had a you know. A couple of homies on my block I would chill with, and we mm-hmm. would, you know, we was playing D and D, and you know, what I mean, video games and stuff. We was in the house, right. like nobody was getting in any real trouble. It was, it was like, nah, we're good. Do you know where it's, he worked at? He was thirty fifth. Okay, yeah, he was at thirty fifth right. for um, when it's as far as I remember, like as long as I remember, he was at thirty fifth. Okay, for a long time. yeah, I was over there for about two and a half years. And he, uh, the funny thing was, he. He made it. He made detective, hmm. and then he never, he never tested any higher. Oh yeah, no, you don't. Because he said uh-huh. he was, he, and he said specifically, he was like, "This just gives me more time to be at home with you guys." Yeah. And so you know, he would work. You would work as a. He was either he was it was eight to four, four hmm. to twelve, twelve to eight. And he would Ooh, come home. Was, yeah, it was whole school. Yeah. Oh God, fuck that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That they, I don't even know when they stopped doing that. But yeah, there was there was in like in the eighties. Yeah. They they had to work all three shifts. Yeah. And he would just rotate. Nobody nobody speaks well of that. He would yeah. He, uh. would, he would just rotate. But the the funny thing was like every when he worked four to twelve, mm-hmm. he would we would come home and he would have dinner made for me and my brother. Mm-hmm. Like when we got a little bit older to be a, be home by ourselves, mm-hmm. he was good. When he worked twelve to eight, uh, we were probably we were in bed by the time he left. Mm-hmm. And then when he worked eight to four, you know, what I mean, we go, we went to school when he was coming home. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, every now and again he would where he worked that four to twelve, mm-hmm. and he would come home, and we was just not doing what we were supposed <laughs> to be doing, not, not cooperating. But then we were here, we like, wait, is that dad? <laughs> oh snap! Get ready for bed, quick. That's crazy. Wait. Now I found when I made detective because I spent the first 
seven years of my career working like six days a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mad hours, crazy overtime, working my days off and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's not, I can't work my days off anymore. Really? Like there, there is no coming in on your day off working an extra tour oh, wow. as a detective. Really? So huh. that that is precisely where all this shit has come from. Oh, okay. All right. This is uh, okay. I didn't have time for any of this okay. yeah, when I was yeah, in yeah, patrol. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? I know that. I, know I, that. I made detective. I cut my cable off. Mm -hmm. Started watching YouTube, and when you watch enough YouTube, you find that eighty percent of the content is about how to make videos for YouTube. <laughs> so, okay, all right. so that's how I learned how to shoot video, take pictures, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And that's what I. That's where this stuff comes from. Okay. I have the time to do this now that I'm a detective. Okay. Um, I found when I started working last out, I work strictly midnight to 8 a.m. That's my steady tour. I don't change. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm home now. Oh. I'm home with my kids every That's night. That's great. And homework, dinner. Get them to bed. Shoot the podcast yeah. with the bra. Get them to bed. Go to work, work. Come back next day. Start all over again. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So unless I have court, like I did today, mm -hmm. I got the day to myself. Go to the gym and oh, everything. That's, that's dope. And in the evening, I belong to them. Of course. And that's of the course. Okay. you know. So it, it has been. A lot of people thought it would be. It was like you know you gonna go to last out. I never, never see. I see my kids all the goddamn time. All the time right? <laughs> yeah, they're asleep while I'm at work. They're, so you know yeah, what I mean. Right? I, I see my. I don't. I don't understand how. I don't understand the, the conflict some people have, but everybody is different. Yeah, you know I'm, what I mean? see, I'm a I'm a I'm a night out like that too. Mm -hmm. I, dude, I wanted to be a cop in this town so bad. Yeah, do you 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 were a cop? I was a cop in state college for a month. <laughs> that One is, month. That it was yo. <laughs> it was the most ridiculous thing ever, mm -hmm. and I. I I had a plan, right? Mm -hmm. My plan was I was going to do five years in state college, mm -hmm. uh, take the FBI exam, mm -hmm. go federal, and then while I was working for the feds, I was going to get my law degree, Okay, and then I was going to try and be a judge somewhere. Okay. That was the plan. That, you know? That's a hell of a plan. That was a plan, hey. right? Man, listen. <laughs> <laughs> they got me so good at state college. It was it was crazy. It was really really crazy. Um, and so it was like, oh, all right, what am I gonna do now? Uh, I got yeah, I got my degree. I graduated from mm -hmm. Penn State. I got a degree. I got a. I have a master's degree. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in administration of justice. Okay. Um, and I wanted. I, you know, I still wanted to get into law enforcement after I left Penn State and mm -hmm. after all that happened. I came back here. I took the test and I passed it and um, I think I don't know if it was the whole thing that happened in state college mm -hmm. or just the fact that they were tired of the name green on the rolls <laughs> they were like no man there's so many damn greens but the funny part is like the, <laughs> like the lady that did my background check she used to work for one of my uncles like I knew her wow. and I, like, I don't know what happened but you know that was the university and like no mm -hmm. this isn't for you man so what, ha what happened in state college alright so I, so, all right, I took the test. 400 people took the test. Okay. Four of us passed it to the level that they wanted it done. Okay. So me, a girl named Kelly that I was, that was, I had classes with and mm -hmm. two other guys. We, they do this, uh, their, the testing procedure was, uh, so this was 98, 99. Okay. So the first thing they did was they had you, uh, you know, take the written test, pass it, boom. <laughs> They had you take a psychological exam. Uh, the guy who took the psychological exam was like, yo, dude, you scored more like a cop than anybody I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. And then they did this video thing where you would be watching a video mm -hmm. and they would record how you responded to the video. Okay. Right? And so. What do you mean responded to the video? So like, like something is happening in the video. Okay. And you have to respond to, to the person that's talking to you in the video. Okay. Uh, it was it was weird, but you know it was ninety eight. That was the technology. Yeah. So um, that and, hasn't changed much, by yeah, the way. I, I didn't, yeah, that, I didn't. <laughs> it's still right. But they were telling me that like you know after mine was done, they were like, yeah, we're gonna keep your video to show to other people like how they should be doing oh, it. Blah, wow. blah blah blah. I was like, word, okay, cool. Um, that was my my first set of dreads. Mm -hmm. I had it about down to my ear, and I asked them if I had to cut them, mm -hmm. and they said, you know, the only thing you need, you need to make sure of is that you can. You know, wear the uniform, it doesn't interfere with that. I was like, cool. Okay. I'm not cutting my hair then. Hmm. 
And then one of the guys that I, that I was working with, he was like, you know, it, it could be an issue if, you know, you get involved with something and somebody grabs your hair. And I was like, you know what? Mm. Okay, cool. Shaved him off. Mm. Bald. Um, so I go to, we go to training at a, at a, uh, state police job. Okay. State police uh, training facility in Greensburg. Greensburg. Yeah, man. Oof. Which is the. The one. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that place. So we were out there. Uh, there's 20 of us in the whole joint from different departments around the state. Mm-hmm. Me and my three people from state college and a whole just a bunch of other cats. We get there the first week and I'm in I'm sharing a room with a guy. He leaves. Hmm. So I have my own room to myself. <laughs> A um, couple different ty- got times, you know, people were going out and drinking, you know, mm-hmm. they had to do it. Like, all right, cool, y'all do your thing, whatever. Um, and then I was, uh, hey, I don't drink. Okay. So I was just, I was like, nah, y'all go ahead, I'm chill. I would stay home, stay there. I was writing rhymes and studying, whatever. Mm-hmm. My squad, I was doing radio at the time at Penn State. I did radio up there for, for four or five years. Okay. And so they would send me mixtapes, and I would just sit and listen to the tapes of the shows that I missed and all that kind of stuff. It was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so we go out to the, the range. First time we go out to the range, um, when it, the State College didn't have any rain gear for me. They didn't okay. have anything in my size. <laughs> All right. So I'm out there the first day. It's raining and cold and miserable, and I'm out there in a windbreaker, and everybody else has their hats and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And we out there shooting, and we got to police up the brass and all that kind of stuff. Cool thing about this story is that mm-hmm. I'm telling you, telling you that, telling you this part, you yeah. know what I'm talking. I know about. what you're talking about. So you know, I mean, we're, we're cleaning up <laughs> me all and, the jargon. Me yeah. and my man Al, and I'm like, Yo, Al, if you find a live one, man, hold on to it for me because this is a mess, dude. I'm about to eat a bullet. He was like, You too, Green. Boom, laugh it off, keep it moving. Yeah. Um, and then like a couple weeks later, we're having, having dinner and like four meals in a row, we had pork and I stopped eating pork in 94. Okay. I was like, yo, if I see one more piece of pig, somebody's going to catch one for real. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. Laugh it off with End of the week, uh, week four, uh, the boss, uh, my captain and yeah, the captain of state college and, uh, the chief of D's. We're up and we're up at the joint. I was like, "Hey, what's up, fellas?" And I leave, whatever, you know. Go back to. They told us to take all our stuff with us because they needed the facility for the weekend. Mm-hmm. All right, back in State College, hanging out with my squad. We're doing, you know, we hanging out back on the radio show, just chilling, having a good time. Right. I get it. I get a beat from the from the department. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I've, I still want to. I really do want to page my my old page. Yeah. See, <laughs> see, 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 see if somebody, somebody responds. Called me back. Yeah. <laughs> Some doctor <laughs> somewhere. Right. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> get a beep they tell me to come down to the station which was right around the corner i go down there and they're like yeah uh we had a bunch of we had a series of complaints that you were uh suicidal and homicidal and antisocial i was like excuse me antisocial like antisocial y'all know who you're talking to wow so they and so they they bring up all this stuff that i was telling you and i was like those are called jokes yeah and what happens is sometimes people tell those and then other people laugh at them. Right. And then you go on about your business. These jokers had me in. The, I was at the department and then they wanted me to go see this psychiatrist mm-hmm. at two o'clock in the morning at Center Community Hospital. So I'm like, <laughs> they oh, trying okay. to 302 you. Yes, dude. <laughs> they tried to 302 you. Yes, dude. I go up there. I'm sitting in the room just hanging out, waiting for the ball to show up. He shows up. I tell him everything that happened. He was like, wait, what? They wow. got me out of bed for this? I was like, yeah, bro, who are you telling? <laughs> who are you telling? They wild. So I was like, all right, cool. Y'all go ahead with that. So I go, you know, I go back to, you know, back to the crib and they're mm. like, all right, stay here for the week. And mm. Don't go back up and we'll, you know, work it all out, whatever. So, you know, go through that whole week, and then they were like, all right, yeah, we made a decision. We're going to go ahead and let you go. Blah, wow. Blah. And I was like, word? Wow. And I could have. After then, talking to the psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I talked to talked to him again, the guy that made the final decision, he was the uh, the city controller mm-hmm. who was essentially in charge. Like, the mayor of State College was just a figurehead. So gotcha. this guy made all, the, made all the decisions. And, like, when I was talking to him, they, like, they brought my hair back up, like, my discussion about my hair. And I was like there's no hair I, I cut it like what what are you talking about 
so you know that's that was the whole the whole thing at state college and i Unbelievable. I considered, I really did consider taking them to court, mm-hmm. and then uh, because I knew a, I knew a couple lawyers around there, a guy that uh that used to teach it at in at Penn State was okay. a lawyer, nice guy too, really good dude. And I could have, but I was like, you know what? Let me just mm-hmm. let me just keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I my own my my only measure of sort of revenge was that. Uh, I wound up smashing in the city controller's house one night. <laughs> uh, his his babysitter was this John I, I messed with for a minute. And Fair enough. Smashed in his crib, so you know yeah. that, was, <laughs> so, that was the that was the universe just kind of giving me a little little pat on the back. That that's great. Now let me ask you a question: What the rest of your class look like? The oh my, pff, come on, bro. Yeah. Okay. I was it was just me. Yeah. Uh, it was me, and there was only two other women. Hmm. Uh, the one girl that I went to Penn State with mm-hmm. and this one old lady, I don't know where she was from. She looked like somebody's librarian, loves right. lady. And what'd your dad have to say about all that though? Um he he told me he was like it just wasn't meant to be. Yeah. You know, that that would that was what happened and you know, keep it moving, what's the next thing? Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad has always been very supportive of me, right? right. And like as much as uh as much as you know just dumb stuff i got into like i went to penn state my freshman year mm-hmm. and blew my scholarship i had a full full pay scholarship uh because i graduated first in my class in okay. high school huh. and where'd you go to high school so okay yeah i was a farm school kid yeah uh, <laughs> baby goats and yeah shit. right yeah. so i went up there and did nothing my freshman year mm-hmm. not a thing and i lost my scholarship and he mm-hmm. was like all right, what are you going to do next? Man. So I just chilled for a little bit. Then I went back to school, you know, and got my administration and justice degree. And it was, it was cool. I, you know, I graduated. Uh, my grades were pretty good by the time I finished graduating. So, okay. like, you know, just, you know, he was just like, just get you your shit together. You yeah. Could, yeah it, was, it wasn't like you didn't have options. Yeah. He was like, get it together for one. I was mm-hmm. like, all right, cool. Um, but he always was like, all right, you know, what's the next thing? Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad has been, I always tell people, like, if I'm, half the dad mm. that my dad was mm-hmm. that I'm doing a good job that's what's up uh, my mom died when I was 10 oh wow um, and so and we were we me and my brother who were staying with my dad we stayed with my dad anyway they got divorced when I was like 2 okay. so I had no real memory of them together um, and we would stay with my mom sometimes but for the most part we were at my dad's house mm-hmm. and uh, my mom was murdered in 83 oh wow and uh, and my dad was you know he just like just handled he was like all right well this is it you know the three of us we got this wow your dad was a cop at the time yeah 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 wow yeah he was a cop the whole time and i remember asking him, i was like well you're gonna solve this right now. right and he, you know not knowing anything about it right right, right. he was like you know i can't you know i can't be involved mm-hmm. and you know i found out later that you know not only was he you know not even allowed to investigate it but mm-hmm. you know as in most cases of uh uh, spouses and stuff like that. Yeah, he was a suspect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like so. You know, they cleared yeah. him pretty quick, and the, right. the ball that they you know thought did it, he disappeared. Mm-hmm. Um, he just so it's not. It never even got solved. No, basically. Ah, mm. oh, that's crazy. Nope. No, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, and yeah, yeah, and honestly, that that whole thing is probably why I am the way I am. Yeah. Meaning, um, what do you mean by that? Um, it's funny, like when you talk, I talk to a lot of cats. I'm, you know, I've been doing this comic book thing for. Mm-hmm. It's it working in stores since uh, I started working in a store at Penn State in '97. Okay. And I worked at another one uh, in the suburbs here. I started working over there at 05, and now I'm down in Amalgam. Mm-hmm. But I've been a comic book dude my whole life, right? Okay. And I was a Superman guy my whole life. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of it that that very much like catch the bad guy kind of thing yeah. it's been in my head my whole life though. Right. and you know when my mom died that just kind of sealed it like you know that's what you gotta do mm-hmm. you know um, so when I have when I talk to people about you know just policing in general and whatnot, I'm like yeah you know what there are some shitty cops out here in the right, world right. and you know what there are some amazing ones out yeah. here and you know, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll have this, I'll have this, this conversation with anybody. Like, I don't give a damn. Right. Like, what are you, what are you gonna, what are you gonna tell me 
Like, yeah, I know you've been through some stuff. I don't doubt it. I'm, look, I can't tell you how many times I got stopped all over the place. <laughs> Can I tell you how many times I've been stopped? Exactly. Like, okay, <laughs> yeah. cool. Keep it moving. Yeah. You know what I mean? I ain't do nothing. Here, here's my stuff. Boom, I'm going to keep it moving. Mm-hmm. And I know that's not how it happens for everybody. I understand that. I understand there's some real dickheads out mm-hmm. here. But, you know, you're like my you're like my idol, man. You're like the what? fucking you're like a fucking rapping <laughs> cop, dude. You're like the greatest thing in the world to me, man. And you know the idea what? that it, that that there are people out here that are very much involved in the things that I'm involved with and the mm-hmm. same sort of mindset mm-hmm. that are also police. Like that, and there's so many. Yeah, that yeah. just that that's the kind of thing that says to me like I I, I refuse to allow somebody to. You know, put everybody in this same vein, mm-hmm. right? And so there's this hashtag out there, Canada, ACAB, all cops are bastards. Oh, geez, like, dude, get the break. fuck out of here, yeah. man. Like, uh, yeah, uh, you know st- what? It's just statistically, as human beings, that can't apply. Yeah, exactly. It just, just doesn't make possible. Mathematically, it just it, doesn't it's make just sense. It's not possible. Yeah. Like, yeah, I recognize that there are. An issue upon issue about in American criminal justice. Right. That's fine. Right. We can have that discussion. Right. On a case by case basis. Yeah. yeah. But you know, one and the other yeah. just it just don't work. I found that, uh, and it's one of the reasons why I'm so transparent. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of cops who will not let you know they're cops in social media. Yeah. They don't use their real names on social media. They don't post pictures in their uniform. And mm. The reason I'm so transparent is because I invite the conversation. Yeah. What I found is that I've never left a conversation with somebody who's like hashtag ACAB. I've never left that conversation with that person having the exact same opinion. Yeah. It's not nobody walks away from a conversation with me like all cops ain't shit. Yeah. Your opinion is going to change. It may not completely reverse. You may not love the police when we're done, but it's going to it's I'm going to impact your opinion. Yeah. Um I mean because I I take my job seriously and I take my blackness even more seriously. So I I recognize that uh the two aren't separate and I'm not more one than the other. I have a responsibility to be to be both exactly and to let people know what's really hitting from both sides so i mean i've literally i've literally had to fight people lock them up take their car take them to jail after taking them to the hospital the whole deal and been thanked because at the end of the day i like i don't have a problem standing up and letting you know why i'm doing it yeah letting you know it ain't personal I've been punched in the listen. First time, <laughs> first time you get punched in the face and can't punch a motherfucker back in the face. Oh god. That that shit will that shit makes or breaks a career. Okay. It All will right. make or break a career. Cause that's when you find out whether or not you really built for this. Okay. You get hit in the mouth and it's over with before you get a chance to get yours off. That's when you find out whether or not you really okay. built for this. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like right. that that, that right there that is and I learned that early. You know, I, I felt like I knew it beforehand, but you know, you don't know nothing until you really. Yeah, till like, it I think Mike Tyson said everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yep. I felt like I knew Absolute it, truth. but I didn't learn it until it actually happened. And I mean, that's that's just what it is. And I feel like I can deal with anything. I feel like I can deal with anything. So I don't have no problem talking to somebody that hate cops. Mm-hmm. I have no problem with that. Yep. I'll do it all day long. Yeah. I hate typing about it. I don't want to <laughs> do it on Facebook. I'd rather have a conversation. Yeah, let's sit down and chat. You know what I mean? But I but you do have a you have a unique perspective. I thought it was interesting, uh, your approach to those issues. Like when you, you post online, yeah. you comment on stuff. I thought it was interesting before I knew that you were the son of a cop mm-hmm. and a you know a former police recruit yourself. Yeah. I didn't know that until until the last time we talked like this. Mm-hmm. Um but I knew that you had a different outlook. You had yeah. a much more balanced approach to the whole thing. Yeah, and that's the, you know that's been the thing for me for a very long time. I actually did a song called Balance. Mm-hmm. Because it, you know it's all if you're if you're if you're not level on it on a lot of this stuff you're never gonna you're never gonna be able to to fix a problem Mm -hmm. you can't fix a problem on one side of it completely Mm -hmm. on one side of it or the other you know what i'm saying right 
um and i you know and i've had this you know i've had people like tell me i'm crazy but i'm like look uh at least there's one of the things i always tell people is like at least 50 percent of the problems that exist mm-hmm. within america like particularly in in black american society mm-hmm. at least 50 percent are the result of you know structural and long long going long term racism mm-hmm. right but <laughs> at the same time, at least 50% are just stuff we need to stop mm-hmm. doing. Mm-hmm. Just, just stop just doing. Just stop doing. Yeah. And you know what I mean? I had people look at me like I was crazy. I'm like, but think about it. Yeah. Think about like, I know you got at least one ball that you look at that dude like, why are you, why are doing, you doing this? That? Why are you doing that? I've always said that we choose our history and we choose our heroes, especially today, when there's so much information available to you. Yeah. We know about systematic racism. We're aware of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We know about Black Wall Street, you know, Tulsa. Yeah. We know about all of that. So to to choose to keep blaming the past for our present is a question of ignorance to be totally honest yeah because we know but we know about the racism you don't have to keep choosing to uh to live under those circumstances yeah you don't have to keep making those decisions yeah so like like you said it's at least half of it is is the systematic racism but the other half is the decisions that we make yeah and if you just choose not to make the decisions that put you at the mercy of systematic racism then you you can you can change the situation yeah and it, yeah obviously it's you know there's there's a lot going on but mm-hmm. like at at the end of the day you know when you when you are when it's time for you to make a decision mm-hmm. are you going to make that decision based on you know things that happened in in a past that you weren't even a part of <laughs> there's that yeah. or are you going to you know move forward mm-hmm. In, in in a in a better direction. I'm I'm seeing a lot of these cats now, um, where the idea is that you know every generation is doing all of this all of this good, hmm. and you know the previous generations are just sort of forgotten. You hmm. know what I mean? I don't know if you saw this thing that that Whoopi Goldberg was going on about the other day. Hmm. Like, yeah, you know what? There are a lot of you know, you know, with the whole thing with OK Boomer and that kind of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what? A lot of that, a lot of those people, a lot of you know, a lot of um, my, you know, my generation, my dad's generation, whatever, they were they were involved in some. You know, they weren't they weren't a hundred percent perfect. Right. But if you want to ignore all of that work, right? All of that work, work. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, you know what? I, I'm. You're right. You're probably getting eyeballed. Mm-hmm you know walking through target mm-hmm. but yeah you know what you're not getting fire hose fire hose <laughs> yeah you know why you're not yeah. getting fire hose cuz we've been through that your pop and his pop mm-hmm. and his mom and they mom, all of those people did that for yeah, you they took that for you yeah. they took that L for yeah. you yeah. you know what i'm saying and it 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 feels real easy to forget that mm-hmm. now. Like if for me, it feels like the 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 American attention span is that long, mm-hmm. and so we just forget stuff real quick. Like nah, man, man yo, this, people like died for you to be able to be out here. There's such a lack, and there's such a lack of accountability. I think that's the in my personal opinion. That's the biggest problem yeah. is the lack of accountability. I had a I locked the kid up once. And uh, it was like his, he was like, he might have been been 20, 21 years old. Mm -hmm. This was his sixth arrest. His sixth arrest. I've been arrested once. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? It is, is you hard pressed in in a major city, you know, growing up under certain circumstances to to get out without a pinch. You know what I mean? You, you could get pinched. That's not, that's not easy. All right. But six times. (laughs) At 21? You know? And I, like I said, I had no problem inviting the conversation. I got to sit here and do this paperwork anyway. My man, how you keep getting locked up like this? His his response was, y'all keep locking me up. 
like y'all keep, like we knock on his door every morning <laughs> like time to go and you know and and go and go and come and get him you know what i mean it's the and it is so widespread like i get that from so many people answers along that line i hear it so often it's just like y'all keep doing this or y'all keep coming around and y'all in my neighborhood doing this well you don't have to be out here yeah right. look at how many people aren't out, out here, here. Right, exactly like why you realize it's just me and you out here right <laughs> <laughs> you know so if you weren't here i wouldn't have anything to exactly do, you know but the, the the lack of accountability and again we we choose our role models we yeah. choose our role models how many celebrities do you see getting locked up for guns yeah. drugs and if you only listen to one record if you only listen to one record, if you just listen to Ten Crack Commandments, exactly, dude. you like, you would get in this game the, and out this game and never quick. meet me. Exactly, <laughs> y'all are trying too hard, man. Like I've never taken anybody to prison against their will. <laughs> not one, not one. I'm not that good a cop. Right, I'm man. not that good. I've never taken anybody to jail against their will. Everybody I've ever taken to jail has basically walked up to me and said, "Hey." Can you take me to jail? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm hard pressed to mind somebody else's. Bit. I honestly think I'm in the wrong job right now. I'm a detective. My whole job is minding other people's business. Yeah, right. I can't stand it. <laughs> I can't stand it. Hurts. It hurts my heart to have to ask people about their business. I don't care. Yeah. You okay. know what I mean? Right. So if I gotta lock you up, it's because you 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 basically up. called me. <laughs> yo, yo, L. I'm over here fucking up. <laughs> Can you just put me away, please? Thank I you. can't. Thank I can't you. stand it, man. That's crazy. But uh, so you you mentioned the comic store, Amalgam, one of my favorite places. Uh, African American owned comic book store in a major city. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah. Um. So how how did you get into comics? I've been a, like I said, man. I've been a comic book dude since I was like five years. And comic books got me reading. Really. I started reading at around four or five mm -hmm. reading comic books my dad had a girlfriend that uh her her son worked somewhere like a newsstand or something so he would have all these comic books mm -hmm. and like it was like the when you had to return them you had to cut part of the cover off to send it back so he had, had, had just a bunch of stuff you know what okay. i mean and i started reading them and it was just fascinating to me the whole concept of you know like superpowers mm -hmm. and the, you know different worlds and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I said, that's how I became a Superman guy. The, you know the idea. Of now, this, are you a DC guy? A bullet to my head, probably. Yeah. Um, but I, I've been a. I was a uh, like I had subscriptions to books. Me and mm -hmm. my brother had subscriptions. I had a, a subscription to Thor and Captain America. Okay. And my brother had Avengers and X Men. Uh, so we had books coming in. Plus, I was buying books all the time, whatever. Um, but. You know, gun to my head. I'd probably say I'm a DC guy because I'm a Superman guy. I was a I was a Marvel guy growing up. My brother used to have crates and crates of comics, and I used to read them. And I I was heavy into reading them until I until I got into maybe high school, and you know, yeah, that's, I, that's, I'm I'm pushing it. I don't even think it was. Uh, I think it might have been to about sixth grade. Sixth grade is when I found out girls like me. <laughs> And everything changed. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but no. I was heavy into him, and I was—I think I was more of a Marvel guy. I was a—I was an—I was an, an X-Men guy. Yeah, the Wolverine dude. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And, and it was around that, that. That was a great time to be a Wolverine guy because it was everywhere, and you just the idea of this little dude and he's got right. claws right. and you can't right. hurt him. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but for me as a you know, I was a, like I said, I was a, I was a Superman guy, and a Thor guy, a Captain America guy, mm -hmm. um, and you know the idea, the th the thing that always fascinated me in, in comics was the idea of these beings with all of this power, right? Mm -hmm. And then not only do they decide that they're you know not going to be just complete dicks, mm -hmm. but it's more like. All right, y'all handle your bit. Do what you got to do. Mm. I'll take care of all this big stuff. Right. Like, you know, when you know when the volcanoes right. are erupting and, and the aliens are coming, I'll take care of it. Y'all right. just take care of yourselves. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not going to take over nothing. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. But mm. what I will do is I'm going to look out for you. Right. Make sure nobody else fuck with you. That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And so, you know, being, 
being a comic book dude and you know it, I, I explain that to people all the time like mm-hmm. you know just the idea of you know what if think about all the people you know mm-hmm. and how they would be right with superpowers yeah. <laughs> and the, most of the terrible shit they would do but then yeah then you also think about how many people actually make that decision every day like firefighters like yeah fuck that job yeah <laughs> every day it's like well <laughs> this thing is on fire I have to go inside of this thing. Yo, like, like I know some cops that I think are great dudes, but fuck being a firefighter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nah, I can reason with a bad guy. You can't yeah, reason, you can't with, reason a with a flame. Nope. It's not going to happen. Nope. I know uh, a couple of firefighters in town, too. Uh, my one boy, uh, my man Brandon, is the most ridiculous human being I've ever <laughs> met in my life. My you, I, think, is, I think you is have madman. to be. Dude. He's a madman. Yeah. I think you have to be, but you know, but he's been on the been on the job for fifteen years. He's a lieutenant yeah. now, doing his thing. You know what I mean? So. And you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, firefighter. Yeah, I think that's a little crazy. job. It's just like y'all go ahead. Yeah, I'm good. You're tougher than me. Yeah, I'm a, I've been in a burning building before. I literally one day went from running into a burning building to walking an old lady across the street. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like what? <laughs> what's, <laughs> right. What's and I was just coming back from like locking somebody up too. Like yeah. it was, it was kind of like that's a day, right? It's there. a day. That yeah. is a day. Yeah, it's, it it gets a little wild. But I I I miss comics. I miss them so much that like I don't have like I said before I don't have time to read. So mm-hmm. I, I watch the stuff on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I follow you know the. I've, I've seen all the MCU movies. Now, are you an are you an MCU guy or I, a DCU? I've, I've guy? liked every MCU movie except for Thor Ragnarok. I hate Thor Ragnarok. Wow, because I'm wait. You like the Dark World, but don't I liked, like Ragnarok. I liked Dark World better than Ragnarok. I uh, am yeah, weirdo. Okay, because <laughs> for me, for like I said, I've been a mm-hmm. Thor dude since '86. Okay. Right? So a lot of that Thor mythology that Marvel created yeah. meant, means a lot to me. Okay. Right? So when Ragnarok came out, A, it was just kind of goofy. Okay. Right? And then it took, like, these core characters and just kind of shit on them. Like, mm-hmm. Scourge the Executioner, like, the whole shake weight thing. Mm-hmm. There were, like, five dick jokes in that movie. <laughs> like, All I right. don't need Porky's Goes to Asgard for, in All my right. Thor movies. Like, I, right. And so... Like the first Thor, like you know, like Kenneth Branagh did an amazing job in mm-hmm. setting up that very, like, mm-hmm. like Thor, semi-Shakespearean like, Thor yeah. kind of thing. And then by the time Ragnarok came out, I was like, "What is this mess?" Yeah, with the that dark shit, world with the heart. Dutch angles and shit, bro. And it, dark world. <laughs> It, it's a terrible I, movie. It, it didn't. It didn't work the way it was supposed to. Right. But it. It had a couple of like you know, Malkith in the books is an amazing character. Right. And Curse in the books is an amazing character. They, they just they it, haven't. It didn't, they it haven't didn't work it out traditionally well. done a great job with the villains. No, they haven't. They really have. They, they I, have. I don't. I don't know why the villains are so hard to do. Because um, prior to prior to Thanos. Honestly, I think the only really, the only really good one, because like they kind of shit on Thanos too. You think? So? They, because they made Thanos into into Ra's al Ghul. Okay. In in the like universal Ra's al Ghul. Well, because for his for, thing was for all the, for the sake of a, a major film, you can't have the motivation he had in the comics. But that's what made him cool. Like his thing was. I like death. Right. I want things to die. I love death. <laughs> And, you know, the whole thing mm-hmm. about the snap, mm-hmm. that wasn't a goal. That was some shit that he did to impress a girl. Right. Which is amazing. <laughs> that, shit's a, that shit's bonkers. Because there's, I, don't know. I guarantee you, there's way more dudes that, that recognize that. Yeah. Like doing some dumb shit to attract a dame than, you know, trying to save the universe by, like, come on, dude. If you've got all this power, then you all you do is you increase the amount of resources mm-hmm. and everybody's fine. Right. You There's got to be some... I want folks to die in your head right. to do that. Right. And you stick with that. I get that. Stick with that. I get that. I just don't know if that's a major, a major film uh, basis. Best villain in the entire MCU. Hmm. Vulture. Okay. Vulture was the truth. He's like a real guy. Oh, my real God. Real problems. And Michael Keaton yeah. killed Michael, that Michael role, Keaton. He did that hard. That he's been rebirthed. Yeah. He did that hard. Yeah. That part when he turned around to Peter in the car, he was yeah. like... Kill you. Yeah, that was good. I was like, oh, 
goodness gracious, Mr. Yeah. Mom. Like, like, wait a minute. Wait, hold on. <laughs> really, bro? Beetlejuice? Okay. Yeah, Beetlejuice. Are you okay? Chill, yeah, Beetlejuice. Man. And I wish, yeah. I, I, and my, my only, my only, I think the only flaw in the MCU, the only real flaw mm-hmm. is that they made the same movie three or four times. Okay. Like, Doctor Strange was just Magic Iron Man. Okay. Um, and a lot of the, the the sort of twists in the movie happened the same way. Mm-hmm. They didn't really develop a lot of the villains to the degree that they should have. Are Doctor Strange and Iron Man pretty much the same character, though? Exactly. So I mean, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of yeah. unavoidable. Yeah. And so if, it's like, if you're going to do those two characters, yeah. and you're going to do their origins, they really are pretty much the yeah, same. They guy. are very super much arrogant, the same. highly intelligent, like rich guys that get that end up down in the dumps and have to fucking yeah. deal their way out. Yeah. 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 And so you know, I that's what you know I I still say Winter Soldier is the best thing in the whole in Winter the Soldier's whole great. thing because it's I mean. not really. It's an amazing. It's almost not film. a comic book story. I mean, it's a spy movie. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a spy movie with Captain America, yeah. and that run, that Captain America run, yeah. that introduced was brilliant. Yeah, stuff, legendary man. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Ed Brubaker killed that, right. and he, you know, they, that was probably the best adaptation of all the stuff they did. Mm-hmm. Um, some of it was just a little like, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, you know, it, there's, it, there's nothing. It's, I, it's, it's it's almost it almost uh, benefits from the same stuff that the Netflix stuff did. It's really like down to earth yeah and ground level it's not a lot of you know it's not cosmic yeah, or, or magical or the only like thing that. the only the only one i watched on netflix was uh was luke cage okay i tried you to didn't get watch through, daredevil i tried to get through the first season of daredevil and every episode basically everyone i was like i'm gonna watch daredevil what every single one um, so I got, through, I think I got through about the first season of that. Really, just never went back to it. You got it. You got to give Daredevil a shot. I, I want to. Daredevil I, I still. Want to. I don't know why Jessica Jones exists. I hated Jessica Jones um, for all that super strength. She always seemed to be getting knocked the fuck out. <laughs> I never quite. Un- I couldn't get on board with that. Yeah, I heard that. And uh, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> um, Iron Fist. Iron Iron Fist. Iron Fist. Iron Fist was almost like a practical joke. Yeah. I felt like Netflix was trolling me. <laughs> like y'all know I wanna like this, right? Yeah. Like y'all know I wanna see this. Yeah, why are you doing this to me? This and is, and is so that Iron Fist honestly turned me off from all the rest of it. Really? Yeah. It turned me I off heard that uh, from a few people. Luke Cage, I liked. I kinda had to make myself watch it though. It was it took me about three episodes before I realized Okay, this is really like a comic book on the screen. It was very comic book like yeah. uh for a show. Yeah. Which was different. And then I kinda had to I kinda had to turn that switch on mm-hmm. to be able to watch it. But just watching it, it was kinda like this is really corny. Yeah. This is really corny. Yeah. And, but yeah, yeah. once you once you put it in the scope of if it's very much like a comic book. Yeah. And un- and that's the thing I love about this mm-hmm. stuff, man. Like if you watch, uh, like I watch Aquaman whenever it comes on, mm. because Aquaman is probably the most comic book of all of all the, the movies. DC movies. Like, yeah. of, of all of them, it's yeah. it's so very very comic yeah. book. Yeah. And you know there are these moments that when you hear it said aloud, it's mm. amazingly corny. Mm-hmm. But if you read it, it just flows. Right. And so you know, it for me, it's it's very easy to do that. Mm. I, it's just like all right, yeah. That that worked. Yeah, I get that. But yeah, man, I give me that all day. That's why you know that's why I watch the CW stuff. I yeah. watch that all day. See, Flash I don't have regular like TV. My, I've never seen any of that. Flash is my favorite thing on TV. Really, that show's amazing. Yeah, it's I've never, so I've never very, seen the, the, like the Arrow. I never seen any because I, I haven't had television in, in years. Yeah, um, see, and I'm not, yeah. I'm not crazy into the DC stuff. Mm. And that's what that's what that stuff is. Yeah. It never really it never really yeah, appealed I to all me. That. I was like, give me all of it. Give me now all I wanna I wanna close out pissing everybody off. I what wanna piss people off. Okay. Dope. Fuck Star Wars. <laughs> right? Right? I, no. No? No. Dude, I got a buddy named Rich. <laughs> uh and me and Rich it was funny when he said this because I I've been saying the same thing too. Hmm. The three men that raised me, hmm. my father, hmm. Superman and Luke Skywalker. Hmm. I am the biggest Luke Skywalker fan, like because I I always liked the idea of this kid was just kind of 
just chilling like this is the most boring <laughs> place in the world right in the world and then it's like wait what wait wait what huh what where oh, Who? Yeah. What? Ed? <laughs> what? huh what De- death star what Who's my what? father what yeah yeah that blew my mind as a kid man um and so like for most of my life until man of steel came out return of the jedi was my favorite movie of all time see now like the old stuff all right cool the pro all right so here's the problem with star wars Mm -hmm. the problem with star wars is that star wars fans probably even worse than most comic book fans Mm -hmm. are the worst people in the world yeah we're the just some of the worst people and you know there was there's this great run of of books that came out after after the the uh, original trilogy ended mm-hmm. and you know just some brilliant stuff so when and that was all considered canon and dark horse comics did a ton of stuff and it was all this is great stuff so when lucas sells the whole thing to disney mm-hmm. disney's like yeah none of that counts <laughs> that's all whatever <laughs> blah 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 and so they create, you know, the the the, the prequel. Well, no, not the prequels. The the last three mm-hmm. come out, and there's this idea from Star Wars fandom that, for whatever reason, it should be how they, they want it. They want it in no other way. No, right? <laughs> you didn't create this shit. You don't like, work here, bro. You, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you know, say what you want about the about the prequels, mm-hmm. about anything that's come after. you. You didn't do it. Hmm. You had nothing to do with it. So you either see it, accept that it exists, hmm. and either enjoy it or move on. But to fucking complain about it and nah. do fucking uh, uh, what's that thing? You know the thing where they, they would get people to sign up the signatures. Oh, the and the, petitions and they shit. They do the petitions to nah. remake uh, episode eight. <laughs> yeah. Shut the fuck up. There's there's been a lot of. Uh, a lot of that shit lately. Like, they tried that shit with Game of Thrones and like, HBO told them to go fuck yeah, themselves. Yeah, like, go outside. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> go out of skateboard, Yo, bro. I hate, so, I, I, like I said, man, I've been in this 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 whole nerd thing my mm-hmm. whole life. And like, comic book fans and like Star Wars fans and like just the fucking worst. Like, nah. you didn't do any of this. Nah. None of, if you were that good, if, you'd be out here writing the it. scripts and shit. You'd I heard George it. Lucas wants his shit back. I, ne- I heard that on. I, I, I was. Uh, what was I watching? I think it was Nerd Rodic on YouTube. Was a, one of those guys was talking about it in a video I watched today. George Lucas wants it back, or he he wants to get back involved, but he yeah. needs such a level of control, of control yeah. that Disney's not Disney, yeah. even going to oblige. And obviously, you're doing something really shitty to somebody's creative property <laughs> that you gave them four yeah. billion dollars, yeah. and they're like. Can uh, I? Yeah, let me. Let me can I have my yeah, ball yeah, back? Yeah, bro? right. It's like obviously you're fucking it up yeah. on some level, yeah. but at the same time, it's like you know this is what exists now. Mm. You either enjoy it or not enjoy it, but you gotta move the fuck on. Yeah. You you out here protesting shit. You're out here protesting shit. So where are, where are we now? Like is is it all? Yeah. Is it all? Episode nine came out. It was cool. You know, I enjoyed it. There was, it was, you know, there was some stuff. You're you like, saw it. why would you do that? But all right, uh, cool. I enjoyed I it. Seen it. Um, and to be totally honest, like, uh, episode eight and nine. At the end of them, I, I was, I, I shed a tear because mm-hmm. eight. You know, spoiler alert: mm-hmm. Luke Skywalker dies, mm-hmm. and that was my dude, right? Yeah. So to see that, like, it was cool the way it happened and all, mm-hmm. but like, fuck, Luke's dead. And then nine, like, it's over. Yeah. It's fucking over. And I hope that it is. I really do hope that. Like, yeah, enough's enough. Yeah, and, <laughs> is and, is and this if, your new hope? <laughs> yeah, that's my new hope. That, you know, that. I hope this shit's over. You want to go with, yeah. 150 years into the future or 150 years and 1,000 years in the past mm. and fuck with some of that? Fine. Right. But that night, leave it the fuck alone. That's like, enough. Let it go. That's fine. Let funny. it go. It's over. I enjoyed most of it. You know what I mean? Like, see, I suffer from watching the critics talk about star wars i won't watch it myself i'm too far gone with it you know what i mean yeah, so yeah, yeah. i suffer from watching the critics pick the shit apart yeah so i'm like yeah you're right this does fucking suck <laughs> no I would, i'm almost i'm almost in that camp 
by choice. I've got chosen to let the critics <laughs> tell me <laughs> tell you what the, how yeah. fucked up the shit yeah, is. Yeah, I, I dig you know that. I, mean? I dig that. So all I see is the flaws. All I see yeah, is the, and, is and, the fucking and, plot holes and shit and, like that. And the unfortunate part about it is, uh, it was for me when 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 Star Wars came out in seventy seven. I was four years old. I saw that movie mm-hmm. five times in the theater. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because well, yeah, you had to do like, that back then. What right. the hell is... And then it ended, right? Yeah. And then one day in, like, 1980, you saw a commercial, and you're yeah. like, what the fuck? Jar Jar Binks. Star- no, no, I'm talking about when Empire Strikes Back. Came oh, out. okay. And you're like, you know, because you didn't have... And, you know, there was nobody mm-hmm. telling you, oh, there's a sequel coming out. Right, right, right. You just saw a commercial, and yeah. we're like... What? Yeah, shit, yeah, shit's out there. More Star Wars? Fuck yeah! That's funny. You're like, give me some more of that. And I, and the unfortunate part about that is that it doesn't exist anymore. Mm. There's no surprises. Like, no, you can't get surprised. You by have anything. to avoid the stuff. Yeah, I have and, to. Avo- and, I have to avoid. And you can avoid the spoilers of it, but you can't. Like you couldn't. You can't exist in American society right. and not notice some shit is coming out. Yeah, and, and or or what it's about. Yeah. Even yeah, you know and, what I mean. Whether yeah. whether or not you get in, in the details and shit, but you you'll know plot lines and shit before yeah before the shit's even finished being produced. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate yeah. because that level of surprise was so good. Man. Yeah, it was so just like wow, I'm surprised yeah. by this thing, and you're allowed to to take it in mm-hmm. without the weight of everybody's little right right like yeah, see, you nah, just, just absorb I take in, it i take in the fucking i love it i love the fandom i love yeah, how I pissed just, off they are about yeah. shit i don't care about oh man <laughs> like, it, yeah, i'll take bad. i'll take i'll take star wars fans bitching and moaning on youtube over facebook <laughs> bullshit any day any fucking chance I get, I love watching them get all frothy. Oh, I, I got toys. I have no idea who these fucking guys are. <laughs> I love it. Nice. I, I fucking love how pissed off people oh are about God, that shit. So and, mad. So, all right. So we're in agreement. Fuck Star Wars. Fuck Star Wars. You fans. heard it. You heard it here first Fuck from Star Arson, Wars, the man. voice of reason, and Lawrence Arnell. Bro, I'm so glad you came through, so, man. Dude, I'm Thank very you so happy much, to be yo. Here, man. This was Thank great. You. This Thank was you very this much. was great. I'm so glad we did this again because yeah. it was so great last time. And this was great. Yes, indeed. Uh, man. I'm glad Thank y'all you. got to witness this. Um Thank you for coming. Of course, man. No doubt. Uh everybody, this has been the RNL Agenda. I thank y'all for your time and attention. Uh I catch y'all in the next one. And whatever you do, do good first. Do good first. Which, by the way, is my favorite motto. In the world. My that shit. is brilliant. <laughs> oh my God, that is brilliant. That might wind up on a tattoo. Somewhere. For real, dude. Oh my man. Peace. Yeah.